Hello. You don't normally see me, do you? Well, you do now. Um, normally I'm behind the camera in the videos, but today I, I need to really just talk about and join in with you all um, the numerous discussions on YouTube about what has happened in our model railway community in the last 48 hours with the very sad news, if you've not heard it before, um, that Hatton's model railway shop um, is sadly going to be closing after 77 years of business. Um, I switched on my phone the other morning, a couple of days ago, or yesterday, I think, uh, and heard that news via um, social media. Um, it doesn't surprise me, um, but I just want to talk about some things that I was in a discussion with on, on a social media page uh, about, um, generally about, not just much Hattons, but about online shopping. Um, I just want to raise some points, and if you agree with me or you disagree with me, um, either way, stick it in the comments box below, it's okay. Um, but I think we need do need to, as a community, is look at this and certainly discuss it. Um, I'm not the first person to talk about this, I won't be the last person, but this is just my point of view, and again, this is just my view, so whether you like it or not um, is up to you entirely. Um, but what I feel is that the reason um, it's happened is, is because of partly the two things, I think. Number one, the first primary thing, I primarily, is the um, current uh, financial crisis that's happening, certainly in the UK, and around the world um, in terms of uh, things going up in expense, the cost of living, people's rent, people's mortgages, people's food shopping, bills, you name it, everything has gone through the roof. Um, this has affected the high street businesses. It has done for a long time. And I think with the availability of um, places like Hatton's, which offered an extremely vast um, online mail order service that shipped around the world for their mail orders, uh, and their pre-owns and their, their trunk services and everything that Hatton's offered as a business, to me was fantastic. Um, did it kill the, the high street model shops? In a way, yes, it did. I mean, not just Hatton's, but online shopping in general. But I think um, the following, because I've had some, some discussions with people and people say, oh, people are just too lazy and it's easy to roll over and just pick up the phone and just plonk in what you want to buy online, have it shipped and it's being lazy. Um, do I think that's true? To a certain point, yes. Um, what I want to say today is um, we should start supporting our local businesses. Um, this is not a political speech or a political video, but in terms of model railway shops, um, what are left out there uh, where we live, um, you should get out there if you can and go into physically your local model railway shop uh, and support them. Um, but there's many reasons sometimes when it doesn't happen. Number one, <clears throat> speaking from experience, uh, my local model shops just didn't exist where I lived. I mean, they closed down. I mean, I grew up in the east end of London. Um, the favourite model shop that I went to was the Engine Shed in Leightonstone, uh, run by a lovely old couple, um, Ken and June Stoobly, who sadly are no longer with us. Um, I was one of their first customers when it first opened. Um, the other model shop that I remember was Lee Models in Ho Street in Walthamstow, East London. Um, and then when I, I've lived over the south part of London now for the best part of 20 years. Uh, and the one that I used to go to was up in um, Norwood Junction, which was Norwood Junction Models. Uh, been there for a long time, I've discovered that. Um, I tried to look for a lot of model shops around where I live in South London. And at the time I couldn't find any. So... I started to <coughs> excuse me. I started to do a lot of my model railway shopping uh, for things that I needed, from locos, rolling stock, scenery, bits and pieces, wires, you name it, anything I needed for the hobby. I found that places like eBay, um, Hattons. I got quite a lot of stuff from Hattons over the years uh, in terms of what I needed for the layout. But I think it was great because it, of the availability, and it. It's very, very good for people that don't have a model shop. Now, that's the only thing I want to bring up in this video is that it's all very well to say, oh, you should get out there and support your local model shop. And, you know, you should go to toy fairs and you should go gallivanting off to some model shop that is out of your reach and you can't get to, which is the case because a lot of us don't have a model shop on our doorsteps. Um, I'm, a little, I'm a bit fortunate now because I'm quite lucky enough to have found 
Um, Jane's Trains in South London where I live. It's been there for goodness knows how long and I just didn't realise it was there. So sometimes doing a little bit of research uh, in terms of where you live geographically and demographically to find out what's in your area doesn't hurt. I mean, the, with the advance of technology, again, online shopping, but also you can use Google these days to Google up uh, and find out what's in your area in terms of hobby and model shops. Um, but sometimes it all, isn't always the case and it isn't always in within reach. Um, there's the other thing about our hobby that there's some of us out there that are a little bit um, immobile, that can't get out of our place of residence for whatever reason. It could be a health problem, it could be something else. Uh, and you can't physically get out to a model shop or you can't go out to a toy fair. And sometimes the only option is left is to do online shopping and source your items or item that you want um, online. And that may be the case. There's nothing wrong in that. Um, but I'm just saying if we can, if it's possible, um, to go out there and support your local model railway shop. Um, Hatton, sadly, they, they went from being a, a, a 77-year-old business um, to closing overnight. They did have a big store um, in Smithdown Road, Liverpool, I believe, um, which was there for many, many, many decades. And then that closed, and then they decided to move to a residential park uh, and do it more of an online business, uh, which they still made a lot of money off of. Um, I know people that in the hobby that have obviously sent from Canada, um, America, around the world, Australia, because they did a great mail order service. But the sad thing is, I think, is that what with the cost of living and the financial demand in the world at the moment, um, they just couldn't obviously stay afloat as a business. The other side to it as well, I'm going to just really touch on really quickly, is um, is uh, obviously a place like eBay. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for supporting your local model shop. Um, I'm a big fan of supporting local businesses. But... When your model shop starts charging 25 to 40 pounds more, when you find the same item on eBay and you pay a couple of quid postage and you get a massive saving on that item, it's like, it's no brainer where you're gonna go. You're always gonna go for something that's, that um, is cheaper and certainly is in, is in the same condition. Um, for example, um, I don't know, the Gresley A4 train pack. I think it's the Silver Link or Silver King. Uh, one of those two. I can't quote you the R number, but I did see online um, a brand new unused uh, Hornby A4 Silver Link train pack with the coaches to match. I think it was about £185. Um, I've seen a, a one or two model shops that are asking sort of over twice three times the amount for that and i'm thinking well all right support your own business but i'm certainly not going to pay over the top prices when i can get it somewhere cheaper and that's the thing i think that most of us like is that ebay and places like e not so much ebay but online shopping for model railway stuff uh, for example um if you don't live near a model shop then you've got the option these days of where the model shop very kindly offer a mail order service you go onto their website um, you can order directly from their website and they will send you your item out to you, which I think is fantastic. And that's a service I think is offered by most model railway shops and any business around the world these days um, that will ship to you. And I think that's fantastic. Um, but if possible, pop in in person and show your support and, you know, do do the best you can. But not all of us can always get out and do that. Um, and for my circumstances uh, speaking again this is a personal video it's not meant to represent everybody on youtube or the world or their views about this subject but for me personally my situation um my time is very limited in the hobby um i run my railway on on saturdays uh, on the weekends um just one day a week uh during the week i'm a very very busy dad uh and also the cost of the hobby as well as mentioned it's just gone through the roof i mean i'm looking at um, some of the new releases for the 2024 season from Hornby, uh, I saw in a brief video yesterday from the Hornby website of their upcoming releases. It's not that much in terms of um, new releases. I, I was expecting a lot more. 
um, but they're so, so expensive. And I think one of the things that also I'm, I'm going to lead on to talk about is that, I don't know about you guys out there, but what are your sentiments about um, price ranges these days? Because I think it's got so, so expensive. It's no longer um, the hobby um, for the young person, I don't think. It is and it isn't. I mean, model railways are, are, are flourishing. They're still doing well. Um, people are getting into the hobby. Uh, the young people are still getting into the hobby, which is good. Because um, I just want to think, or say, should I say, that that mumbling my words up too much, that it's something I feel very passionate about, um, in that the hobby should be affordable. It shouldn't be um, unaffordable. And I think what's happening is with Hornby, um, they have just geared now towards the collector and the adult modeler. That's what I have seen. That's what I believe has happened. Um, it's no longer um, like someone who's, for example, you know, between the ages of 10 upwards or 11 upwards can go to their mum or dad or grandfather or someone in the family and say, you know, I, I would like this item for Christmas and my birthday or, you know, so they pocket money and go down the model shop and, hey, presto, you can get a loco or you can get uh, some coaches or you can buy something for your layout. Um, that was the case back in the in the 1980s for me. Uh, my granddad used to give me some pocket money. He used to save it up. And at, and at the end of, say, four, three, four weeks, I had enough to, say, go out and buy um, a building or um, some signals or something I needed for my layout. Um, and then birthdays and Christmases, I got something like a coat, some coaches or a loco. Um, but nowadays, I mean, it's, you, are, you can't really expect um, a young person who's still in school, shall we say, to go to their parents or family and say, you know what, I really love that loco, but I need £250 to buy it. It's getting silly. Uh, not everybody is affluent, not everybody is wealthy. Um, if you don't believe me, just look out the window where you live and see the state of the world financially, how things have gone up. Uh, simple things like food, when you go shopping these days, you know, you don't get much change out of 50 quid. It's ridiculous. Um, and that is just the way the whole world has gone at the moment. And I think with the hobby, sadly, so that's what's happened. It's getting more and more expensive. So as you can see from my videos and from the things that I run on my layout, um, yes, I have got a, a quite a few uh, new items, but the most of these things that I enjoy running are pre-owned. They, they are vintage um, Hornby stuff from the, from the 1980s uh, and even before. So I am a big fan of vintage model railways and also pre-owned stuff I love. Um, and I just wanted to give a shout out and say that that's probably why I think websites like eBay um, are so popular uh, with model railway uh, enthusiasts and model railway builders because you can get reasonably good items on there for um, normally a decent price. Some are a little bit extortionate. Um, with the Hatton's pre-owned stuff, because Hatton's one of the things that Hatton's um, are doing at the moment is there is a massive stock clearance and that includes a lot of their pre-owned stuff. And it always did make me wonder, you know, did did they have some sort of eBay source that took all of the pre-owned stuff from eBay or some items that were on eBay, snatched them up and then resell them? I don't know. I can't prove that. I'm not um, insinuating that. But I think websites like eBay uh, certainly do come in handy if you can't get to a model shop you're housebound uh, because of your age and mobility you're able to use your hands in the hobby but the old legs don't work too well and you can't get out to the shop so you can't get out to a model shop or get on a train and travel up to a you know toy fair so i'm just saying online shopping in terms of our hobby isn't necessarily a bad thing but i just think sadly if there were more model railway shops about like there used to be, certainly in London, um, which is where I live, um, then it you wouldn't have this problem of businesses going under uh, and just getting to the state now where we're just online shopping for this and that, or you know we just do you know we don't have that much choice. Um, again, people said, oh, but there's such and such model shops here, and if you look on the map, there's loads everywhere. There isn't loads, I'm sorry to say, like there used to be. 
there might be a couple where you live in that certain part of the world, but we don't all live in your town. Um, most of us, <laughs> the human race, a hundred percent, we're all scattered about hither and thither, all around the world, in different towns and suburbs, and different neighbourhoods, and different places in in the world, and we don't always have a model shop, or we might have a hobby shop that does maybe uh, some paint brushes and some paints and some craft stuff, but in terms of locos, rolling stock, building scenery, everything you need to to, to do the hobby, um, it's something that we don't always have the luxury of. Some of us do, if you do, fantastic. If you have a model shop near you, go and support it. I'm gonna do my best in, in 2024 to support Jane's Trains. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just a very, very sad situation that we've lost Hattons. Because it, I did used to use Hattons you know, once in a while and it was handy. But it's not the end of the world. There are many fantastic model shops out there that will still offer a mail order service and online website service uh, as well as physically going into them if you can um, again if you can get to a model shop or a toy fair brilliant me personally the only option i've got outside online shopping is jane's trains now uh, like i said norwood junction models where i live that went ages ago uh, and i can't always get down to jane's trains um, it's a lovely shop it's a great shop but one of the things that i i really find a problem with with Jane's trains and again I'm not knocking them so anyone from Jane's trains who's managed to get all this video and watching it um, I'm not knocking you guys but what I do find a little bit frustrating with you is that you only open four days a week uh, Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday and you're only open from one in the afternoon till six in the evening um, I'm very much an early bird person I love to be up really early at the crack of dawn literally as the sun's coming up every day half past five i get up every day in the morning um irregular as clockwork and i i'm always out the door early if i've got to be somewhere so for shops open at say 10 o'clock in the morning that's brilliant for me because i haven't wasted half the day but you get to a shop that opens at one o'clock you know by the time you've done that even you know half the day's gone um like i said i'm busy in the week so for me it's difficult to get down there in the week uh unless i plan something specific um Whereas with the the online side of things, I mean, you can you can be at home and as long as you've got money in the bank to pay for something, it's there. And with, all right, the only downside is you've got to wait sometimes up to, I don't know, a week to get what you want uh, and you do get it. And the downside is you could get it, it could be a fault with it, something could be broken, you can't go and take it back. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of half and half. I love supporting a local model railway shop, but I also think online shopping for model railway stuff is, is handy sometimes. But the overall thing that, that wins hands down, and I'll close this video by saying this, is that you cannot be the old fashioned human face-to-face -face customer service value these days. That seems to be disappearing. Um, I grew up in a generation where you went into a shop, whether it's buying a loaf of beef or a loaf of beef or a loaf of beef, a loaf of bread, <laughs> a loaf of bread um, or, you know, pound of sausages, whatever it is. You went into a shop face to face. Uh, people said good morning when you went into a shop. You said good morning. Um, you exchanged pleasantries. You went for the item that you were looking for. If you couldn't, someone would come and help you or ask what you wanted. Um, that's the kind of customer service that I miss. But I did experience that with Jane's Trains recently and from other people I've, I've listened to and, and seen, they've experienced the same thing and, and testimony has proved that that's a, a good business to support, uh, as mentioned, which I'll do my best to do this year. Um, but we, sadly that is going, isn't it? We, we're not seeing the customer service value in terms of the model railway shops anymore. They're all slowly but surely disappearing. Um, because I just think it's getting so expensive for the business owners to to maintain things like the ground rates, the rent for the property, uh, obviously stock and ordering. You know, it, it's people. If people are going online and buying stuff cheaper, that's where the market is going to start gearing towards. Is where you can get things cheaper and more quickly. Um, I think th the argument is for me when we had COVID a couple of years ago where we're all in that lockdown period where we were introduced to the internet, as it were. Um, that's when things like Amazon and um, uh, food shops that delivered your food for you, takeaways, you name it, 
um, it really came into its own uh, during COVID and the pandemic when we could all just pick up the phone or open up the phone or the laptop device or the iPad and, and just tap in what you wanted to buy, pay for it, and it will come to your front door, um, which is brilliant. And it works to this day for people, as I said, and I'll say again, people that are invalid, uh, immobile, people that can't get out of their house, but still have an active mind, an active pair of hands they can use in the hobby, but sadly can't get to a local model shop. Um, so that's that. Anyway, I just wanted to say, um, I'm sure, as I'll close this video now, I'm sure all of us will wish all of the staff um, at Hatton's Model Railways and sincere uh, and, and very thankful uh, for their their time and their service and in serving us as model railway fans and builders and customers and i wish them and i join them everyone else in wishing that patterns um all the very best in the in the future for their uh, further ventures and whatever they choose to do um but we're all deeply saddened by that that terrible news that Hattons is going um i predict and maybe someone will will wind this video back in the future when it and it's already happened and say oh it was right i predict that um Online companies like Hornby uh, will slowly but surely disappear um, as, as a business because if they carry on doing what they're doing in terms of just raising, they can raise the standards, yes, but they're also they're raising the prices too much. It's again becoming a hobby that is only for the collector uh, and the, the, the adult modeler. Uh, it's no longer for the young people who can afford it. Um, so if they start bringing their prices down and their products, they will continue to, to make money as a business. But sadly, I think, well, and this is another video discussion. I'm not going to get political, but sometimes when you go into these, you know, these debates, things come up. And what really annoyed me and still annoys me to this day, I'm not really an angry person by nature. But one of the things that angered me about Hornby, one of the things is that they decided to get rid of all their production uh, at Margate and put it all over to China. Um, where it's all Chinese made nowadays. I know they've switched up the the the, the, uh, the manufacturing in China a little bit more better, um, so we don't get things like the dreaded the dreaded mazat rot hasn't appeared anymore. Um, but still, um, they haven't really gone the right direction as a company. I don't think it's geared up towards marketing for the adult collector and the the the, uh, the grown up modeler now. Um, the TT one twenty to me is an absolute flop. Um, they took an idea from the 1960s TT scale and they tried to rebrand it and remarket it. And it wasn't, it was going out of the window back in the 60s when Double O took over. Um, you can debate about that because I'm sure there's many TT fans out there watching this or on YouTube. I know that have got some fantastic TT scale layouts. Uh, I'm not knocking TT. Um, but I think to try and rebrand an idea that's, that was, that's already been and gone, um, and then to cut the model railway shops out of the equation and did not deny them a slice of the cake and say to people, oh, if you want to buy TT layouts or TT train sets, or anything to do with TT, you have to buy it from us direct as a company. You can't go to your local model shop and get it, which to me, that's just really, really bad, bad practice. Mm -mm. That's setting the points the wrong way for a derailment. That really is. You know, excuse the pun, but it really is. Uh, it certainly was. Um, so TT didn't interest me anyway. Why would you want to upgrade to TT when you've got a vast double, double O scale collection? Um, I've got some stuff, but there's people out there that have got absolutely boxes and boxes and boxes. They could start a shop. The amount of gear and stuff they've got for double O scale. And all of a sudden you want them to just put that to one side and start collecting TT. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's the same as, um, I'm going on to a bit of a tangent now, so please forgive me. But it's the same when um, Blu-ray first came out. Blu-ray format for DVDs. Everybody wanted to go over to uh, stand DVDs to Blu-ray because they're high definition quality. And now it's, it's 4K and everyone is gearing towards 4K um, quality for DVDs. Me... I've still got the original DVD format when it first came out for my films. I watched them that much anyway, but, you know, I I never, ever jump to a trend if I think that it's, do I need to have it or not? And I think with something like TT, most people will just like, okay, 
nice idea, but you know what? Not for me. It's probably for someone out there, but obviously I think their marketing just really sort of wasn't there for that. Um, since then, I've heard that uh, Simon Kohler uh, and co have left the marketing, or Simon Kohler's retired now from Hornby, I think last year he retired. Um, I'm not going to get into that and comment about that because there's many, many things I think about that that little scenario that, uh, shall we say. But anyway, going back to Hattons. So just to summarise and, and just to close this video really quickly, because it's 25 minutes long now, I know it's a bit long, but I really, really, really uh, sincerely hope that we can, if possible, support our local businesses in terms of our model railway shops. Um, if you can get out to support them and go and shop in there, if you can, then do so. Um, like I said, I'm going to be supporting Jane's Trains as much as I can. Um, and let's just hope for the best for a hobby that regardless of whether we buy it from a model shop or we get it somewhere else, um, let's hope that um, our hobby continues and that uh, things financially get better in the hobby uh, for everybody. Because we, you know, it doesn't matter if you know whether you've got money in the bank or not, you know, it's an expensive hobby and you know, we need things to come down in price a little bit. So, you know, we can all enjoy it, but also it's a win-win. It's a win-win for the distributors, for the manufacturers, for the customers. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, anyway, so goodbye Hattons. So what, what is going to be replacing it next? I don't know. Um, there are some major nice model shops out there. I mean, the Model Centre, uh, that's one of them. Uh, Rails of Sheffield. I've dealt with Rails of Sheffield in the past. Um, very, very good. Um, great items. And their online eBay stuff is good as well. Um, so, once again, if you support your local model railway shop as best you can, carry on playing trains, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for your time today, and take care. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe.